Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and uh, <laughs> I didn't do any videos yesterday, it's kind of crazy. I've been doing the channel for about eight months now, and I've always done, come hell or high water, uh, a video a day, but yesterday I was just too tired. I had to like take the train, like a nine hour train, and then, uh, yeah, before and after it wasn't happening. But um, these are the sales figures from November 2017. Uh, they're from Comicron, which is a really great uh, website. It's kind of funny, but um, <laughs> mostly SJWs on Twitter, they will always decry Comicron uh, when it doesn't help them. They they always like to refer to like magical sales that you can't see but are good. It's like, oh, the trades are good. Oh, the, the sell through at cons is good. N no, because the funny thing is that a book that does terrible if you're saying like it's it does great in some way or shape or form, people would still be talking about it online like in a positive way. Like you when you see the very few positive um, references to America, they're they just exist like by themselves. You know, people who like Miracle, Mr. Miracle talk about it a lot and they mention things in the book <laughs> like none of the positive uh, statements about um uh, America are actually <laughs> mention anything in the book. Uh, okay, so um, I haven't looked through these, but this month was actually very, very crucial because these sales figures got like seven SJW books canceled at Marvel. And the fact that our boy TBIC, Thick Boy in Charge, C.B. Sobolski, was able to do it and just say, because the reason they weren't getting canceled is because they're SJW books. It's like, oh, you're going to cancel the book with a Latina lesbian? And uh, so basically um, that was one of the reasons they did this stuff because they were like, oh, well, then you, you can't cancel it. But C.B. Sobolski got hired for a reason. He got hired to cancel stuff like this. So starting right at the top, I still got to say that <laughs> the number one is not number one-y, if that makes any sense. Like... Doomsday Clock is doing legitimately good, but in a country of a third of a billion people, the number one book for a major event should be selling more than 100,000. That's a little like, mm. but then you look at the Batman Who Laughs, um, uh, that's l legitimately good because that's not a huge event. That's just kind of, I mean, they, there's been dozens of metal tie-ins. So um, Batman Lost, I'm not really sure what it is. <laughs> I don't like uh like uh the who is it the other i actually don't really like the batman books right now so i just kind of glance at them but it, you can see right here batman's doing great now here we go with captain america and uh that one is a little surprising because it says 695 but really it was kind of a number one it was mark wade back on it now it did good but I feel like that should have done better. I really think that the damage that Nick Spencer did to, uh, like I said, I did this one of my earliest, uh, my earliest videos. I talked about how in my old apartment in, in Texas, I had this Captain America shield in the corner and I'd carried it from like every comic, you know, every apartment for like 10 years. And I was like, it's not going to be in my next apartment. Like, the way I look at the character has changed, perhaps permanently, and it's going to be a long time before I look, and it might just be done, you know? Um, I actually didn't even really get into Captain America until I was like 30. Um, so uh, then we got Star Wars. The Star Wars ones, just they just always do good. Um, I don't think they're that great, but they, they do good. This is what's uh, really impressive, Justice League. Uh, Justice League has been like a mid-level sales for a long time so i'm not sure if these are I don't, this wasn't the christopher priest i don't think so because he just came in i'm not sure why this justice league did so good batman white knight your boy uh it's up there at sixty nine thousand. very happy about that uh this is what's funny the punisher did quite well the punisher was selling like sub twenty thousands. so they did a reboot with him in the armor Got it up to 62000 now. They gave it a lot of press, and it was kind of like a... I don't know. I don't think any comics are collectibles these days. But, um, meaning you think it's going to jump up in price. But it got people's attention. What we got was a very, very mediocre what-if story, basically. So I'm going to see how that does in the future. 
By the way, it's weird for me to see Punisher. Like to me, he's the Punisher. Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows at 61,000 is... Okay, so I'm not sure we... Oh, you know what? I think some of these might be lenticulars. So just for people who don't know, lenticulars are those covers where you turn them and you see two different images. So the deal with those is all of a sudden the, the sales for everything tripled. Like Old Man Logan, I think that's a lenticular. Yeah, yeah, I think some of these numbers are a little wonky because... Uh, they they didn't do all the lenticulars in one month. So what Marvel did, I'm starting to stutter like uh, Benicio del Toro did in, uh, <laughs> in the Last Jedi. I don't know where that's coming from. Um, uh, is they said, you know, the, I like the lenticulars. I thought they were really good. Um, they were fun. It was a fun concept. They kind of screwed them up a lot by having the other image have nothing to do with the first one. It's like. Here's Miss Marvel, and then behind it is Captain America. It's like, what? What? I mean, I can see if it's Spider Man because she's kind of like that young hero, but Captain America, what? But if you wanted, say, 50 of the lenticulars, you had to buy something like 100 of the non lenticulars, which made them triple their numbers, but left them with a whole bunch of stuff they couldn't sell. Um, so we get down here, action comics, uh, the the uh, Superman comics are doing very solidly. They're not spectacular, not to like, you know, make a dumb pun, uh, but uh, they're very solid and, and do not speak ill of Superman unless you want to incur the wrath of 4chan. They love the current run of Superman books. Here is fantastic news, at least for me. Peter Parker. Oh, damn, darn. I can't tell if this is actual success or lenticulars. I'm going to have to wait. So uh, Peter Parker's Spectacular Spider-Man had a ridiculous like 200,000 first issue. But then over like the next four issues where Chip Zdarsky was treating it like a joke, it dropped really far down to like 40,000. I No, I don't think this is a lenticular. I think this is actual sales. So then he did two really great, no, three really great ones. I still got to read the most recent one. And I think his numbers are creeping back up, which is great. So Spider-Man, which is the Miles Morales, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if that's lenticular or not. That's going to screw up every. Oh, man, this is screwing up everything. Yeah, so this still got lenticular. So like this whole mid-range right here, anything above 40,000, like I can't really tell. No, no, it's, it, no, yeah. So, where, where is it? 297, 56, I don't know. It'll have to wait till next month. <laughs> so, from these numbers right down here, I know that they're not lenticulars. So, um, yeah, like She-Hulk selling 36,000, that's because of lenticular. <laughs> this whole video is ruined. <laughs> um, but, uh, okay, so Supergirl, oh, Supergirl's selling, okay, wow. Nope. Okay. Yeah. All right. Those are those are first. So um, Joe Glass did this. Uh, <laughs> he did this video called the Marvel uh, cancellation bloodbath, and then he tried to make the ridiculous thesis that ten to fifteen thousand is considered solid sales right now. It absolutely is. That's appalling. But something like Supergirl at thirty four thousand. Something like Ben Riley Scarlet Spider. 34,000 titans at 34 these are good these are these are solid numbers so i kind of respect that um going down <laughs> so i don't know what's lenticular or not it's, it's destroying my video okay so uh incredible hulk is that what they're calling gogurt hulk now i don't know dead man what okay i did not realize that dead man sold twenty-seven thousand copies that's actually fairly good I didn't realize it was a glow-in-the-dark cover. I wouldn't have thrown it away. Um, again, I don't know if some of these are lenticular, so it's really destroying my uh, credibility right now. Um, John Wick. Phew, honestly, those are pretty good numbers for an indie comic. For a Dynamite, 22,000 is good. It's legitimately good, but those things are going to freaking plummet because that was absolutely awful. So uh, going down farther in my absolutely ruined video. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Axel Alonso is, is getting his revenge on me from the grave. Okay, so this is actually really, really interesting. Wildstorm, which I hated. I hated the first issue. I got that the spinoff Michael Cray. That was terrible too. But people have been telling me, they go, these, these Wildstorm comics, they're not that bad. They're definitely not the Wildstorm of the 1990s. But they're like, Warren Ellis has kind of got his little pocket universe and he's doing some interesting things. Now, one thing I've got to say is they are giving some garbage tier artists. And it, could they, they know it's not, not going to sell a lot. Um, that's kind of weird thinking. Like, it feels like if you would do it like 90s style, eh, I don't know. It feels weird to like manage decline, <laughs> like Margaret Thatcher says. Um, so Realm from Image. Now we're down to um, Image Books. By the way, I had been talking about how Image had, um, it's gone like really far left. It's really alt left alt lifestyle freakazoid comics and they sell really bad most of them they're buoyed up by a couple that sell okay and i got an insider who said there's this guy named david brothers and he is a far left extremist and he was the guy he was like brand manager he was the guy who was leading uh image in that direction well he just quit so i'm hoping they can come back to being something normal Stop being so Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Be more or less like Dallas, Texas or Denver or something like that. So I've heard good things about Realm. Uh, if I look in the comments, if people are saying, yeah, yeah, do a video, uh, I'll do one. If they're just like, eh. Uh, Darkhawk, not doing good. I think that was just a one shot. I should have checked it out. I didn't. I, did Mim do a video on that? Jean Grey was just doing awful. That was a diversity book that got killed. There was no reason to make Jean, especially this version of Jean Grey, which seemed like a completely different character. Killer Be Killed uh, is doing quite good on issue 14, doing quite good. That's impressive. Falcon, absolutely abysmal. Second, this is the whole thing. This is why they, they had to have SJW characters take over uh, costumes because... Uh, these characters can't stand on their own. Falcon is an okay-ish character. He's actually really good in the movies. He's a quite different character in the movies. In this one, he's just soulful black man. Blah, blizzle, blazzle, gang violence, racist cop, blah, 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 blah. Nobody cares. Um, so on the second issue, it's down to 16,000. That's pathetic. Master of Kung Fu, which was a one-shot, which was a horrible comic. Pathetic sales. So... Uh, now, and this is kind of sad because this is I actually gave them credit for trying this Marvel did this weird thing where they did when Legacy they actually brought back some other series but it was just for one shot and none of them did well Silver Sable which was actually a pretty good comic 18,000 uh, Master Kung Fu which is awful 16,000 uh, Dark Hawk I, I, I don't know how it is 17,000 so yeah that was a big old failure speaking of of failures runaways <laughs> which has a tv show that i don't know if a lot of people are watching it but it, it sounds like it's okay third issue sixteen thousand. this is e comics needs to stop S stop hiring ya authors it's always failure the things that first of all there's millions of YA books. So just saying, this person writes, writes for YA. That, that, that's what they said about Gabby Rivera. No, no, no. It's, it's like in the 90s when all these celebrities would, would write um, children's story books. Because anyone can write a children's story book. I feel like anyone can write a young adult novel. Like, they're, they're very kind of, like, cliche. So it's just like, no, no, stop. Miss Marvel... This is so funny in that it's a pathetic. <laughs> okay, so um, check this out. Actually, this is turning into a good this is turning into a good uh, one. So Jean Grey, right there in the middle of the screen, uh, canceled, selling 16,000. Falcon, not canceled, selling 16,000. Um, Ms. Marvel, 15,000, not canceled. Uh, Captain Marvel, 15,000 not canceled. Gwenpool, 14,499 canceled. 
generation X, 14,000. So I think we've determined, with some exceptions, that 15,000 is where they uh, cancel, which is funny because Joe Glass is saying 10 to 15,000 was abysmal. Now this one makes me sad. Bane Conquest, which is very fun. It's a real blast from the past. It's doing awful. Just absolutely awful. I'm really, I just, it's sad. 13,000. I was really pumping it up. I think I did two or three videos on it. And I said, uh, I don't know, maybe it's 290s. Maybe people don't like, like a fun version, maybe. And I, and it, this feels kind of mean to say, because he's a good guy. Graham Nolan's style is just too boring. Um, but, uh, okay, so down here is interesting. Batman the Dark Prince Charming, book one. Although they give it the issue number of zero, when I think it's two or three, it had a very high price point, and it is listed under the comics, not the trade paperbacks or graphic novels. Uh, twelve ninety nine, thirteen thousand, and you go, oh, that's not very good. Twelve ninety nine, it's literally more than three times as expensive. So you extrapolate that, it's actually doing quite good, um, especially when. Uh, when you get into books like that, uh, there's a much higher profit margin on trade paperbacks than there are on floppies. So that's, I would call that a success. It was, it could have been bigger. I think they advertise it very oddly. I thought it was just one book and I thought it was a graphic novel. And it, Oh, I know why it didn't sell. It could have sold a lot more if they wouldn't have wrapped it in plastic. You couldn't flip through it. Um, Coyotes, actually selling okay. Coyotes, Redneck, Descender, um, all selling okay. Black Belt abysmal surprised black bolt didn't get canceled i think they're doing this thing where if it's like under 10 it, no because gene gray got canceled at like seven. Oh, you know what black bolt's written by a muslim guy i think i think yeah that might have saved him um gotham city garage is doing terrible that's kind of shocking iceman twelve thousand. and then cena grace thought a change.org campaign would uh save it that's embarrassing dude superwoman is selling horrible oh my god hawkeye is at twelve thousand. you know one of the things that i absolutely detest about sjw creators is and i talk about this all the time kelly thompson did not get hired because she's a great uh writer kelly thompson got hired because they wanted a woman to write uh kate barton Hawkeye, fake Hawkeye. When you get hired for things that are not merit or talent or skill, when you get hired because one leg is longer than the other, or you know you got gray eyes, in your mind all you have to do is keep doing that. One of the things I never, ever see SJW creators do is strive or admit things are lagging. I see this all the time with chads they go hey man i this is a good book but it's like slipping you know and or you'll say oh boy this tactic is not working let's try something else you know let's you know 1990s let's give them all stubble and leather jackets they will try they will just keep trying try and try let's bring in a guest star let's bring in spider-man let's they used to always do that in the 90s uh, who's popular bring in spider-man like every failing series would have a spider-man crossover they don't try the uh this is hawkeye issue 12 it was written exactly the same in every way as Haw hawkeye issue one um there the the it's not the success of sales it's the success of we took this job from a chad um that was the big thing we took this chad hero clint barton and gave it to kate wait is her name kate barton whatever fake hawkeye and real hawkeye us avengers did terrible bombshells this is funny bombshells always gets presented as like female writer female characters you got it going on girl and it sells terrible somebody was saying that the the merchandise related to it sells good so they just keep this just for like whatever luke cage which it says 167 i think this is like the sixth issue of the new run is disgusting they have neutered absolutely neutered luke cage and it's it's <laughs> I know everyone calls everything racist. Everything's racist. They hired uh, a creative team because both of them are black. One of them is a bad writer. One is an okay artist who's getting better, but not really ready for the big stage. 
And that's one of the things I say is that, um, and somebody said this to me about mags and then I kind of extrapolate to everyone. Hiring people for purse puppy things, uh, reasons sets them up for failure. And it's, you can't say, oh, we support black creators. Then you hire someone not because they're talented, but because they're black and the character's black and then it's failed. All you've done is put a stain on David Walker's career. He is, he was not ready for a series. He is clearly in the backup stories and a backup story in an annual like level of talent. And maybe if he had to strive, he would get better. But he knows I'm the black guy The Marvel has his phone number and I answer on the first ring. So blizzle, blizzle, blah, you know, they're going to put me on black this, black that. They had him on Nighthawk. They had him on uh, 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 Luke Cage. They put Jeffrey Thorne on Mosaic. Like that was this, that was the biggest mistake to think diverse characters need diverse creators of the same exact type of diversity stupid um injustice too always sells bad i kind of don't understand it so here this is it's interesting gi joe real american hero this is introducing the uh female latina uh snake eyes aka fake eyes did okay now they kept saying like it sold out well that's because you didn't print a lot <laughs> i mean honestly this isn't very good it's eleven thousand. i mean that's less than the ninja turtles ongoing that nobody talks about that's less than like power rangers okay royals got canceled kind of unceremoniously star trek discovery <laughs> the number one did eleven thousand. that's pathetic community challenge pathetic here's what's weird oh i forgot wicked and divine is one of those that supposedly does really good in um trade paperbacks but the floppies does not eleven thousand. that's kind of like eh. uh i didn't realize there was so many ninja turtles cartoons uh, Snot Girl. Ugh. This book makes me so mad. It's by the same guy. I'm mad that it exists. It's by the same guy who does uh, oh, Scott Pilgrim. <laughs> I, was, I was blinking his name and the, the title of the book. So, I actually like Scott Pilgrim. I am definitely not in a key demographic for it. I read every single graphic novel. I didn't like the movie, but I love the graphic novels. So he comes out with, you know, not a sequel, but he did like one other book in between. And then he did the snot girl. The artist is fantastic, but it's about a girl who always has thick green mucus coming out of her nose. A beautiful girl. And it's just like, why would you do this? Stop. Stop. No, <laughs> nobody wants to look at this. Okay, Cyborg at 18, which was the one before Kevin Grevue is writing 19 and 20. That, that's really bad sales, 10,000. Uh, unbeatable Squirrel Girl. <laughs> Cyborg is getting canceled and it sells more than Squirrel Girl, which is uncancelable. The thing about Squirrel Girl is, and this is very, very blunt and mean, they drew her to look like an ugly librarian. So, amazingly, librarians throughout the country are, are ordering the hell out of Squirrel Girl. <laughs> it's a pretty much fourth dimensional chess move. They're like, can we get a comp composite of every homely female librarian in the country? And then they draw a character like that. <laughs> Freaking just making that money. Uh, we go down here and it's a bunch of, uh, just it's, now it's just indie books. Dark Fang. Dark Fang, number one from Image, was so bad. I quit halfway through reading it, ripped it up, and threw it away and never made a video of it. It was absolutely awful. The uh, new talent showcase from DC I was going to buy. This one has terrible sales, below 10000 The price point was absolutely freaking insane. It was seven ninety nine for basically a book of sample pages. Sample pages is, I mean, nowadays you just kind of get hired because people see you on Tumblr or Twitter. But back in the day, you had to make three to five pages of sequential art and show that you could draw backgrounds, men and women, superheroes, people in regular uh, clothes, vehicles. So it's it's literally a bunch of sample pages. Um, down here, this is this is all. God, Bug the Forger always just did terrible. That cutesy pie, like tee hee stuff, does not work. I don't know why they keep trying it. Um, so yeah, here's just a bunch of indie books. <laughs> oh my gosh, America. Issue Nueve, 8,000 copies. That is pathetic. And again, it was obvious this was not working from like issue two. 
there was ne- all we ever saw and this is the book that was named superhero of the year literally just for gender race and sexuality that was it stupid this is so stupid um uh down going down this is more some licenses uh extremity i don't think this yeah black panther prelude 6000 black panther is not an a-list character i don't know why they're pretending he is and giving him five different series and titans and all this type of like we bought black panther a year and a half ago because of the artist brian stelfreeze that's it that was it that was that was it so yes now we're down and these are like really badly selling uh indie books the shadow which is the one by Cy spurrier that's like modern day and uh he basically did like an aubrey citizen he purposefully antagonized this small but loyal fan base so predictably it's doing absolutely terribly dastardly and muttly this book the lowest selling I think it's the lowest selling DC book. So it's at 255. Yeah. Oh, Batman. Oh, no, but these are some of them are uh, reprints. No, no. So I think some of them actually are. <laughs> there are lower selling. But uh, yeah, that's really, really bad. Uh, it is. I did. I did a video on it. I think I did on Spato Delgato. One of the worst comics I've read in my life. And for some reason, Garth Ennis. He was kind of a troll. He was able to get them to sign to do uh, like um, not, not just like for one or two issues. It's I think it's like six issues, and I think it's in the contract that they have to put it out. You do not understand how bad this comic is. Uh, so it's going down Transformers. This IDW. I do not understand how they still have the license to all these Hasbro toys. They make the books. They sell the same as Zombie Tramp ongoing from Action Lab. By the way, Zombie Tramp, I'm going to be very blunt. Just giant boobs. Honestly, there's like a, there's this, like this little fan base just like just put out a character. We don't care as long as it has big boobs. That's fine. Um Jesus. Oh, sorry. This is pathetic. So, Dynamite has the license for James freaking Bond, and they can only sell 5,000 copies. It's pathetic. And then they hired Alice Cott, who's literally like a socialist, to write. This is stupid. Um, so going down some more. I don't really know any of these books. Uh, Big Trouble in Little China is doing really bad. Uh, they kind of, you know, pumped that well dry. Okay, so now it's just a bunch of poorly selling indie comics. <laughs> Uh, this is where like the Mags Visaju and Kwanzaa comics are usually at, but they don't have anything out on the stands this month. So uh, yeah, so that's it. Oh, and I'll just take a peek at the graphic novels. This is kind of an obvious one. It's going to be Star Wars, Deadpool, Flat. It's basically stuff your mom has heard of to buy something for your nephew. Um, so yeah, this Paper Girls one, I keep it keeps doing good. I, I don't really know anything about it, but I do see it's good. Injection doing okay. Uh, graphic novel sales are always low. You can even see like um, Star Wars does five thousand, but they have. You see, they have higher price points and they have uh, much higher. Um, what do you call it? Uh, profit, profit margins. So I'm just trying to see if there's anything weird. I want to see what the really low ones. Those, those are always funny. <laughs> Flash forward to one year from now when this, the Jawbreakers trade paperback sells like fifty copies. Jeez, there's like a freaking million of them. There's more trade paperbacks than there are floppies. The hell? Okay, so... Like, manga reprints. Let's see if anything I've actually heard of. Yeah, these are really low. But these are nobody you heard of. Cloudy and Rex by Lionforge. Whatever. But, um... Okay, so that's my video. Um, uh... uh it, tell me if you want me to keep doing these. I, the first time I did it, I thought nobody was going to like it, but they tend to be fairly popular. So, um... Uh, tell me what you think about this video. Tell me what you think about me going a whole day without doing videos. It's kind of weird. I like woke up and I was literally like fiending to do a video. Anyway, uh, subscribe. Make sure you're st still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to this super chat. And the Patreon, you're funding original content. And I'll have more 
videos up uh, later today.